Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights. Last time it was a werewolf action triple feature. Gotta love them. There's a bunch of police at my apartment right now. Not my apartment. The apartment across the street from my apartment. And two kids have decided they want to watch the whole thing from right outside my door. So, I can kind of hear them. Um, I don't know if they're getting picked up on the recording, but... There's two kids right outside my door watching a bunch of police. Which seems really stupid to me. It seems like a good way to get shot. That's why I'm inside. If there's an abrupt cut, it means shots were fired and I decided to stop recording. Speaking of firing shots, the first movie we watched was Wolf Guy in Rage Lycanthrope. Um, occasionally shortened to just Wolf Guy, which... Wolf Guy's kind of a funny name, just on its own. It's like, uh, not a wolf man, just a, you know, a wolf guy. But Wolf Guy enraged lycanthrope. There's some, some $12 words in there. It actually would be kind of unfair to call this a werewolf movie. It, it is a lycanthrope movie, not a werewolf movie. And I had a... I, I said... Uh, the, the werewolves in uh, Twilight are lycanthropes, not werewolves. And I had a bunch of people getting pedantic with me. To be clear, all werewolves are lycanthropes. Not all lycanthropes are werewolves. So, the main character in this film, for example... Oop, he's quite hairy, and he has wolf powers. But he is not a werewolf. He never transforms into a wolf. Um, although his powers are tied to the full moon. Japanese film and Japanese uh, Eastern supernatural films in general tend to just be kind of weird because Eastern people have a very different supernatural mythology than we do here in the West. Um, so, like, ghosts and vampires and stuff are always so so different in Eastern cinema. But this one's particularly weird because this seems to be the Japanese trying to make a werewolf movie based on, like, Western legends that they don't fully understand. It'd be me, like, me trying to make a Japanese ghost movie. <laughs> it wouldn't work. I don't, I don't fully understand the concept. And it seems like the Japanese didn't fully understand the concept of werewolves. But they still made a damn entertaining movie out of it. Film stars the infamous Sony Chiba, or uh, Sinichi Chiba. That's his real name. He went by Sonny when he came to America. Or I guess Americans started calling that when they brought his films to America. I don't know which came first. Famous for, he was in like the Street Fighter movies. Not the video game movies, the original Street Fighter movies from, like, the 70s. Um, and for being in Kill Bill. That's probably his best-known American movie, was Kill Bill, Volume 1. He's, uh, the sword maker in Kill Bill, Volume 1. So it's about Sonny Chiba. He's this descendant of this wolf tribe... This, like, tribe of wolf people, um, which kind of reminds me of Twilight, but, um, he's, he's the last one in his tribe. His tribe got, like, slaughtered by Japanese soldiers. Um, so now he's, like, a detective, and he gets this case for, uh... There, there was this woman who was gang raped, and all the guys she raped are suddenly dying in the same mysterious way. It just, it looks like they got attacked by a tiger. But all of the, like, the scars just, like, appear on their body. Their flesh just rips apart in real time with no nothing touching it. They just rip apart. Um... And and Sonny Chiba is hired to like figure out what's going on, and he he traces his back to like 
the the girl who got raped was uh like part of a tiger tribe very similar to Sunny's wolf tribe so she has tiger powers and can like summon ghost tigers to kill people i think i think that's what's going on kind of scanners honestly like it reminds me a tad of scanners cuz she has these like mind powers to just like kill anyone and then of course uh she and Sonny Chiba get captured by this I think government agency I think it's a government agency they get captured and they start uh manipulating the tiger girl to use her tiger powers against the people the people they want dead they're like manipulating her to kill people and they're also experimenting on Sonny Chiba because they know he's like a wolf guy and th there's this really cool sequence where they're like dissecting him they like cut him open and are like pulling out all his organs and it has this like trippy psychedelic color grading to it like the color grading suddenly becomes very it's like blue and red and all these like bright vibrant colors and it's pretty obvious they did that to like censor the scene because this is already like a really violent movie. There's a lot of gore in this movie. But then just that scene, they're like cutting a guy open and it's it's really obvious the different colors were there to like lessen the impact, get it like a lower rating or or get it A rating at all. I don't know how the Japanese uh film rating goes, but like you know, make sure it's released. It's so it's like psychedelic censorship, you know, because they they did that in a lot of like old movies. They just make it like black and white or something. Uh, Taxi Driver made it red, which made the scene worse. <laughs> like it's so much more shocking, tinted red than it would be if it were just in color. That one backfired. <laughs> But uh, th this film, uh, it points for creativity, points for not just going black and white, it's crazy psychedelic colors. And they, uh, they rip all his organs out, right? But because he's like, he becomes invincible at the full moon, so it's the full moon, and so he like, all of his organs just go back inside him, and the wound just like heals up. <laughs> so it's... Uh, lo lots of people getting disemboweled in the movies I review. First movie where someone's been re-emboweled. Yeah, and then he, uh, he escapes the government facility. <laughs> they, like, tried to make a clone of him, but it's, like, the most anticlimactic thing. Like, the guy comes out and he's, like, all, like, I, I think it's a joke. I think it's supposed to be a joke. The guy's, like, really overdramatic, like, ooh, it's me, I, I was cloned from your uh, wolf DNA. I'm the perfect uh, opposite to you. We're both equally powerful. And then he just, like, fucking dies because his body can't handle the wolf DNA. It's the, it's the most hilariously anticlimactic thing. He goes down in, like, a hit and then just, like, falls apart because he can't handle the wolf DNA. The wolf wolf guy meets up with this other woman who maybe I think is from his tribe. They don't make that super clear. I think she's from his tribe, but she might just be some other lady. And uh, she's like helping him escape. But then the government convinces Tiger Girl that, like, oh, she's she's taking him from you. He's cheating on you with this other woman. So Tiger Girl kills her and then tries to kill Wolf Guy, but it's still the full moon, so he's invincible. And she ends up dying instead. Yeah, the, uh, the plot's a little all over the fucking place. <laughs> Which, I mean, everything else about the movie is so aggressively weird. 
you barely notice that the plot just goes everywhere. <laughs> um, I would not blame anyone who thought this was not a very good movie. I, I understand, but I think it's amazing. Probably just because I love aggressively weird movies. And this is weird. Very weird movie. Like, nothing like it. There's, there's nothing like this movie anywhere. It's like... It's like weird Japanese cinema trying to impersonate weird American cinema. Which is just a... Uh, Oof, that's a volatile cocktail. I'll say that much. Um, I, sh I should mention the uh, wolf girl who shows up to, like, help him partway through the film. She, like... Like, she introduces herself and she has... Sh she's, she's, like, getting all sexy with him, like, ooh, we should be together... And he notes, like, oh, you have, like, the same name as my mother. And then, like, while they're having sex, he just, like, keeps bringing up how similar she is to his mother. And it's like, dude, stop. <laughs> like, at one point, I think he straight up says, like, you are my mother. It's like, that's not something you should say while you're fondling a woman's breasts. This is just... Stop! I'm not okay with this. Maybe something's getting lost in translation there, but... Like, from my end, this is like... They're not related, but it still feels weirdly incestuous. We did hit a big milestone with this movie for Matt Prisons. I've been keeping track of the body count, and in this movie... There's a shot where Wolf Guy shoots, like, eight people all at once, and the very last person he shoots is the 1,000th dead body this this series. Give or take, I'm, I'm not a perfect... I, I haven't been perfect about counting it. I might be, like, one or two under, but I think, I'm pretty confident in my count at this point. They keep telling this guy they got a warrant for his arrest. He's not coming out, dude. What what else do I say about Wolf Guy? It's it's wild, it's all over the place, it's it's everything I love. It's weird as fuck, um violent as fuck, just super fun movie. Does not give a shit. Directed by Kazuhiko Yamaguchi, who um, directed the Sister Street Fighter series, which also I think briefly features Sonny Chiba. I haven't actually watched the Sister Street Fighter series, but I do have the Sister Street Fighter collection coming down the pipeline. Be prepared, there will be Sister Street Fighter movies this year. Next up, we watched Werewolves on Wheels. Uh, the story of a biker gang who come across a satanic temple. And they can tell it's satanic because there's a satanic cross out front. Um... The the satanic cross in this movie, it's like it's like a normal cross, but the top is like a circle with horns on it. And it's not a symbol I have ever seen anywhere else. I I tried to look into it and I, I couldn't find any other evidence of this existing, like real or fictional. This is this is a satanic symbol exclusive to werewolves on wheels but it's so ubiquitous within the werewolves on wheels universe that these random bikers recognize it as satanic right off so anyways they're, they're at this they're outside this satanic temple and these satanic monks come down and give them like bread and wine and they all fall asleep 
And so they take one of the biker's girlfriends and, like, have this big ceremony and appoint her the Bride of Satan, which makes her a werewolf. Because Satan's a furry. That's, I get, that's canon now. The, the Bride of Satan becomes a werewolf. Satan's gotta be a furry. It was a very furry night all around, right? You got... I, which I guess is sort of inevitable when you combine werewolf movies with, like, action exploitation movies. This is a, there was a woman in Wolf Guy who wanted to fuck the wolf guy and was very adamant that she wanted to fuck him because he was, like, a wolf man. And then the Bride of Satan turns out to be a werewolf. And then in Wolf Cop, someone fucks the wolf cop while he's a wolf. Werewolf fucking all around a night. A very furry evening. So yeah, they, they appoint this woman the Bride of Satan and she becomes a werewolf. And then, you know, the next day the biker gang drives off and she kills two of them out in the desert... And then they just fuck around in the desert for, like, an hour. Like, my god, this movie was... It had such a promising start. Like, it's it's a good concept. I like the idea of, like, a werewolf biker movie. And the, the start is actually, you know, seems... It, it does It's not good, but it seems like the setup for, like, a fun B-movie. And then they just fuck around in the desert, and it's so boring. It's so boring. This might be the biggest disappointment of Matt Presents so far. I don't think it's the worst movie I've shown, but it it's the most disappointing. It's the most, like, man, you could have had something, and you don't. You don't have something. It's just a really boring movie after the first, like, uh, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Because there's... There's all this talk of, like, yeah, we're gonna, like, go into the desert and, like, drink and do drugs and have a party. They don't do any drugs in this movie. There's, I think one of them smokes weed, and that's it. They, they keep talking about, like, acid and LSD. Cause it's, like, early 70s, kind of, like, hippie biker culture. They're like, yeah, we're gonna do all these drugs, and then they never do any drugs. All they do all movie is drink beer and and wine in the one scene. Wine that puts them to sleep. So it's not it's not even like it's this wild party movie out in the desert. It's just boring. There's just nothing going on. I, I would like to point out the title of this movie is Werewolves on Wheels, plural. But there's only one werewolf in the movie. Which is lame. Like, I was all excited for, like, ooh, what's this crazy werewolf biker movie gonna be like? Nothing. It's boring. <laughs> I, uh, I put on the trailer for this. I like to have bumpers between my films. You know, give me a chance to, like... Get up, go to the bathroom, get another beer, maybe get some food. Between movies, so... Uh, I'll put, like, trailers and other bumpers between the movies. So I put the trailer for Werewolves on Re Wheels before Werewolves on Wheels. And... I'm watching it with my friend, and then the trailer, they're just like... The, the most intense biker horror movie ever! And I'm like, how many biker horror movies are there? Like, that seems like a low bar to clear. But then later in the the trailer for this movie, they're like, the first biker horror movie. It's like, how can you be the most intense biker horror movie if you're the first? You know, you can't just be like... You know, Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Yeah, it's me, uh, the the greatest guy to ever land on the moon. Well, yeah, so far you're the only one. <laughs> of course you can make that claim when you're first. I don't know, Werewolves on Wheels, I don't recommend it. Although, 
I almost want someone to just like take take the start of this movie, take the parts of this movie that works, and make like an actual movie out of it, and not this boring bullshit. I guess I should probably mention it's an easy writer cash in, in case you hadn't figured that out. Because there were a bunch of biker movies in the 60s, but none of them were super popular. And then Dennis Hopper made Easy Rider, and it it had like no budget, but it made it, it did gangbusters in theaters. And suddenly everyone's like, "I want to make a biker movie. So you can make these biker movies super cheap, and they'll make tons of money at the box office because everyone wants to see the next Easy Rider." And this, so this one they spiced it up by adding a werewolf. Um, and I mean, if the werewolf stuff wasn't there, and when I say the werewolf stuff, I mean the satanic stuff. If the satanic stuff wasn't there, this would be an incredibly boring movie. You know, that's the only thing that works about this movie. Yeah, easy writer, this is not. You know, this, this is nothing like easy writer. It's not smart. It's not fun. It's not interesting it's werewolves on wheels not rec do does not come recommended by me but our last film sure as hell does it's wolf cop my god i love this movie someone in the comments seemed excited that i was talking about wolf cop i share your enthusiasm i love wolf cop I was kind of, I, I usually know exactly which order I want to put these movies in when I'm showing them, but I was kind of torn on this one. I didn't know if I wanted to show Wolf Cop or Wolf Guy first, because usually I'll show, like, the weirder movie last, so that people are, like, more drunk when they're watching it. And while I'm sure Wolf Guy is the weirder of these two, both aggressively weird. They're both the type of movie you want to watch drunk. Like, very drunk. So the reason I decided to put Wolf Guy first... Quit making noises while I'm talking. The reason I decided to put Wolf Guy first instead of Wolf Cop is because it's a foreign film, so we'd have to read subtitles. By the time you got to Wolf Cop, you know, it's in English, you don't have to worry about the subtitles. Wolf Cop, the tale of Lou Garou, which I think is like some some language word for werewolf, or for wolf, just in general, some, some language Lou Garou translates to wolf. Um, Lou Garou, a disheveled beat cop in a very small Canadian town um, who just, like, drinks all day gets caught up in this, like, Satanist conspiracy to... Uh, I, I should be more specific. This, like, changeling satanic conspiracy to uh, control the town because they've appointed him their werewolf. They, they they need a werewolf to, like, complete this ritual to keep them looking human and in charge of everything. They have to sacrifice a werewolf. Um, and so they always choose, you know, like, one of the dumbest or most useless people in town. And they've picked Lou. Unfortunately... And to be fair, the movie only implies this and never outright says it. But I'm going to take the implication and say it's true. Uh, Lou is much stronger than previous werewolves because he's an alcoholic. Booze makes the werewolf stronger. That's... I mean, there's probably a reason they didn't say it outright, but they definitely imply that that is why he's stronger than the other werewolves. And so, he, uh, I mean, first he, like, cleans up a bunch of the crime in the town because he's a cop and a werewolf. So now he's, like, extremely powerful and can take out 
you know, big criminal organizations. And then he finds out about the conspiracy and takes those people down too. I found while watching this, I like straight up didn't remember the ending, which is weird because this was my fourth time watching this movie. I watched it once, like way back when it came out. I watched it once in college, drunk with my friend. I'm like, uh, what's like a good movie to throw on while we're drinking? Oh, Wolf Cop. Perfect. And then I watched it when it was on Joe Bob Briggs' show, Joe Bob's The Last Drive-In. Um, this and Wolf Guy were on that show. Didn't intend for, for that, but I mean... And it's weird that he didn't pair them together. He showed them the same season, but didn't show them together. This is... Wolf Guy and Wolf Cop are, like, one of the most perfect double features I can imagine. That's, that's like, serendipitous double feature. Wolf Guy and Wolf Cop. If you're looking for a good movie pairing, right there. Wolf Guy, Wolf Cop. So this was the fourth time I've seen this movie... And I, I straight didn't remember the ending, <laughs> which which is very odd. It's not it's not like a bad ending either. I guess it is just like, cause there's so much insane shit that happens in like the early parts of this movie that the climax seems less intense than all of the other bullshit that's already happened. So I guess. That is, that is retrospectively a criticism I have of the film. The ending is kind of forgettable in the face of all the other insane shit that happens in this movie. But, on the other hand, I love all of the other insane bullshit that happens in this movie. Again, this is like right up my fucking alley. You know, super violent horror action comedy... Lots of booze, lots of satanic stuff in there. You know, this is good. This is exactly the type of thing I love seeing. It's perfect. It's, it's, this is a movie, I, I, I mean, I just said I've seen it four times. I could probably watch Wolf Cop every day and not get tired of watching it. It's, it's genuinely one of those movies that's just so entertaining I could sit there and watch it on repeat. Very Canadian movie. Like, very Canadian movie. Which is weird, because I'm pretty sure Lou has, like, an American flag pin on his jacket. I didn't, I didn't take a close look at it, but it looked like it was an American flag pin. But they don't even try to hide the fact that this takes place in Canada. Because there's, like, a shot of trains going by, and it's like, Canada Railways. And... Um, they, they use the word gitch, which is Canadian slang, and I'm, I'm given to understand very specific parts of Canada slang. Uh, maybe I have some Canadian viewers who can clarify that. It's, it seems like there's, like, very specific parts of Canada that use the word gitch. But it is not a word anyone in America uses, so it's like, yeah, this is pretty obviously not America. And I mean, just everything about it feels Canadian. It's just, I mean, first of all, it takes place in the dead of winter, so lots of snow. Uh, it's all out in, like, the forest. Um, everyone drinks nonstop. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> There's an event in the movie called The Drinkin' Shoot, where everyone gets drunk off their asses and goes hunting in the forest, which is hilarious to me. Um, and there's a store called Liquor Donuts. It's a liquor store and a donut shop. You can buy liquor and donuts, and that's the most Canadian thing I can think of. And Unless it was like... Liquor, donuts, and maple syrup. That's the only thing more Canadian to me. As an American who has never been to Canada. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
like, I, there's plenty of Canadian films that I could mistake for American. This is not one of them. This is Canadian all the way. It's Wolf Cup. It's amazing. It's... I've, I've never known anyone who didn't like it. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are people who are, who do. This has, like, a weirdly, like, middling reviews on IMDb, which is odd to me, because, like, I get it's, like, a dumb spectacle movie, but at the same time, it's well made. Like, it's, like, the cinematography's really good, the editing's really good, there's lots of, like, snappy... Edgar Wright, Sam Raimi shots in this movie. Like, it, it feels very Edgar Wright, Sam Raimi inspired. It's, it's a well-made film on top of being, like, dumb fun. It's dumb fun, but it's really well-made dumb fun. Thought I heard a shot. Turns out it was just a big police car hitting one of the speed bumps. I hid in the bathroom for, like, 20 minutes over that. So I recognize this is not going to be everyone's thing. It is, like, absurdly violent, and there's also, like, kind of some gross-out humor to it. Not, not like, not a lot of gross-out humor. You see a guy's penis transform into a wolf penis. That's what I'm talking about. Real furry night tonight. So, like, yeah, I, I get that this is not going to be everyone's thing. But on the other hand, you picked up a movie called Wolf Cop. You can, like, look at the box and get a pretty good idea of what this movie's like. Like, if, if you went into Wolf Cop thinking it was anything other than what it is, that's on you. So, my question for you last time is, what was your what's your favorite non-horror use of, like, horror characters, horror monsters, all that type of stuff. And I was actually kind of leaning towards saying Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop might have been my favorite. But then, uh, Pigman Trav commented, uh, what we do in the shadows. And I'm like, hmm, you know what? I think that does count. I mean, it's my question. I, I get to decide if it counts or not. And I've decided... Uh, what we do in the shadows absolutely does count. So, uh, Pigman Trev, I'm stealing your answer. My answer is now what we do in the shadows. Good movie. Good. I love fucking uh, Taika Waititi. I've liked every single one of his films. Like, my, I've, I've seen all of them. I've seen every Taika Waititi film, and I like all of them. I, my least favorite is Thor Ragnarok. And I can't even give him shit for that, because, like, I, we know how much Disney meddles in those Marvel movies. And even then, he made, like, the best one. Not the best one. I think the best one's probably Guardians 2. Be Guardians 2, Guardians 1, then Thor Ragnarok. But still, like, that's impressive. <laughs> you know, like... Disney breathing down his neck, and he still made a good movie. Taika Waititi is one of the best directors working right now. Uh, he also said a lot of stuff about Richard Stanley, the director of Color Out of Space and Island of Dr. Moreau. Um, this is some interesting stuff he says in there. If you want to like pause it and read it, I yeah I I didn't I didn't go into that much detail, but uh, what he says here is is. This is my understanding of the situation. I got a lot more comments on the uh, 2020 thank yous video than I did the movies of 2020 video, which the thank yous video was just a shortened version of the films of 2020. It's like, okay, if you don't want to sit through this 45 minute video to hear what I have to say at the very end, here's just the very end. I've gone ahead and unlisted it since, but that's the one that got all the comments. Probably because it was shorter. So, uh, Nuno Q. Ramalho, hope I'm saying that right, suggested Otto or Up With The Dead People, uh, which I looked up. Bottom of the poster. Contains extreme zombie sex, 
No one under 18 admitted. That went straight onto my fucking watch list. It's, it's, uh, seems like a movie about a, a zombie who gets involved in porn. It's like a, like a zombie version of Boogie Nights. That went onto my watch list very quickly. I will be watching that film. Uh, he also mentioned Mysterious Skin, which is about, like, alien abductions. Which is actually a film that was already on my watch list. But, like... Every movie's on my watch list. I have like 2,000 movies on my watch list. So, uh, interesting picks there. Um, Movies I will definitely, hopefully, get around to watching. This week we're continuing the werewolf theme, so... Very simple question. What's your favorite werewolf movie? You know, this year we're gonna dedicate some time to the classics. So, I'm starting off this triple feature with the original Lon Chaney's The Wolfman. After that, and this is a bit of a late edition, I just found this at my local Blu-ray store. Another Wolf Cop. I knew I knew there was a Wolf Cop sequel. Never watched it. I, uh, I've heard lots of good things about Wolf Cop. I have heard nothing about this movie. No one has watched this movie, which it's most of the same people from the first film. I think it's maybe all of the same people from the first film, so I don't know why this one isn't more popular. Maybe we'll find out, or maybe I'll be like, no, this is this is an unheralded gem. Who knows? Another wolf cop. And finally, we're going to watch one of the most famous werewolf movies... Outside, I like the old Universal stuff. Joe Dante's The Howling. So that's our werewolf triple feature for next time. Until then, I'm Matt. Have a nice day. I'm gonna go hide in the bathroom.